Welcome back. Now, before flying to Thailand, President Duterte visited Myanmar. What are the business opportunities there? Joining us live from there is Andrew Tan, Managing Director of Consult Myanmar, a Singaporean company based in Yangon, which does consultancy work for companies looking to set up shop there. And it's also a member of the Union of Myanmar Federation of Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Hello, Andrew. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. So, Andrew, our president just came from a two-day visit to Myanmar where he actually said he was hoping to collaborate more with Myanmar in the pharmaceutical, food, and beverage industries. Well, what to you would be the strong industries of Myanmar worth looking at for foreign investors like Filipinos? No, I, I, I think he was mentioning the fact that uh, there are like uh, two Filipino companies that's been in Myanmar for like 18 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is, I think, Unilab. Uh, Unilab uh, is, is the company behind uh, Enervon C, uh, multivitamin, and the other one is Oishi, Oishi Snacks. So these companies have been in Myanmar for like 18 to 20 years and they are doing pretty well, they are, they are one of the market leaders here. So, so for a Filipino company, uh, the, the condition in Myanmar is, is, is something that they understand because Philippines went through the stage of being uh, you know, not, not so developed and, and the Myanmar, uh, you know, and the Filipino entrepreneur, they, they know how to survive in the Myanmar market. Uh, can you expound on that, uh, that Filipinos know how to move within the Myanmar environment because we experienced the same thing? What exactly did we experience? Uh, I, I, you know, Philippines went through a stage of, of being uh, rather, uh, you know, it's an emerging market and it, it's the, the uh, legal system is not so uh, well structured, um, poor infrastructure. Uh, and, and also, you know, uh, uh, issue with getting uh, skilled labor. So, so Philippines went through that, uh, you know, like like uh, 20 years ago. And so, so many of the entrepreneurs who are successful now, they when they come to Myanmar, it, it reminds them of how they started, mm -hmm. and they know how to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Andrew, it's been five years since Myanmar opened itself up to foreign investors. From your point of view, have you seen a mad rush of investors just looking to take advantage of what's often been described as the virgin country? Uh, I, uh, I would say uh, you should approach Myanmar with caution because it's, it's an emerging market. Mm -hmm. Market means high risk, uh, so people should be aware of that. But uh, 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 despite saying that, there's a lot of opportunity for company with the right uh, kind of skills. Uh, remember that uh, Myanmar lack uh, skilled labor. So many of the companies that succeed here are those in the infrastructure business. That means uh, these companies are big engineering companies or even small, medium-sized engineering companies. And they have a lot of skills, skills in uh, areas like civil engineering, electro electrical engineering, yeah. and all that. And, and because of the uh, rollout of the telecom network over the last like uh, uh, three years, uh, many of the small and medium-sized uh, engineering companies that were you know, subcontractors to Huawei, to Ericsson, actually did a very good job here and, and they make a lot of money here. So you must have a skill because Myanmar don't have skilled engineers and, and if you have a company that has a lot of uh, skill, uh, deep knowledge in certain areas like telecommunication, uh, you can make money here. And the other area now that is growing is banking. Uh, the banking and financial sector is looking for people. They, they want people with skill because uh, the banking system here is like maybe 20, 30 years behind uh, even even uh, Philippines and, and they are looking for skilled uh, people who can add value. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that uh, Myanmar is experiencing what the Philippines and other emerging markets experienced 20 years ago. How is Myanmar catching up, do you think? Is it catching up catching at the, right, up the pace right pace or yeah. at a much faster or much slower pace? Uh, I think they're going as fast as they can. Uh, I can't really compare to other countries because conditions are different. Bear in mind that Myanmar went through a period whereby for a long time they were under military rules. So uh, the, the, uh, the military tracked the best they can, but you know, being, being army had a limited economic knowledge. So, so in a way they did not uh, manage the economic aspect well. Uh, one of them is education, the other one is building of infrastructure. So many of these things were not uh, done properly as it was done uh, over the last like 20, 30 years. So, so in a way, Myanmar is way, way behind. But at the same time, you know, because of all these, uh, you know, um, a deficiency, there are a lot of opportunity for company with deep knowledge in that sector, infrastructure, uh, 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 like uh, deep knowledge in education, in banking, you know, in, in telecommunication, in software. These are big business here. Andrew, take us to the ground there. What's the business environment like in Myanmar? What's the pay scale uh, versus the lifestyle of people there? What's the ease and the cost of doing business, bureaucracy? I imagine red tape is still a big issue there. Compared, if you compare those factors in Myanmar versus the ASEAN neighbors, how does Myanmar fare? What's it like? Um, 
Oh, okay. Uh, let, let's talk about uh, wage labor. Uh, wage, wage labor, let's say uh, uh, the minimum wage is only uh, 3,600 uh, uh, charge local currency. And that works out to be, you know, you're assume, assuming they work uh, six days a week, uh, eight hours a day, that works out to be about maybe like seven, seven, 70 US dollar, okay, which is very, very low. Okay, so, so, so labor here is still very low. Uh, and and despite very high inflation, okay, so so that is uh, one area that uh, for a lot of company that require low, uh, you know, uh, cheap labor. Uh, basically, this is an ideal place like a factory. Okay, uh, the other one is if we talk about things like uh, bureaucracy and all that. Uh, Myanmar is trying to improve on that. Bear in mind that the education system here is broken. Broken in the sense that. Um, you know, there's not been much uh, improvement in the education for the last 20, 30 years. Uh, so, so, so most of the Myanmar people who graduate from university now, or for the last five, ten years, are graduated with a deficit. They don't have a good education. Uh, so, as a result, uh, the bureaucracy here is bad because you can't get good people, uh, and and the government suffer the most from it because the government pay pretty low salary versus the private sector. Okay, so in private sector, we can pick and choose because we can pay high salary, but not in the government sector. So, so the, it's something that the government is, is aware of. The, com- the government is fixing it as much as they can. Uh, and and uh, you know, when we go to Taika, the Department of Investment and Company Administration, uh, the directors there, the senior management, they are very, very pro-business. But at the same time, they are also struggling because they, they, they also uh, face that same problem. Mm-hmm. Andrew, finally, I know you do consultancy work for companies looking to set up shop in Myanmar. From which countries do you notice the biggest or the strongest interests are coming from? Uh, currently, the biggest, uh, okay, um, the biggest interest is coming from Myanmar's neighbor. Okay, uh, China is one. Uh, it also shows in the tourist figure. Okay, and, and the investment. Uh, the other one is uh, Thailand. Okay, the Thailand and and Myanmar are immediate neighbors, and the Thai. Uh, Companies, uh, many of them have been in Myanmar for like 20, 30 years, so they know the market pretty well. And, and the Thai uh, embassy and, and you know has been doing a pretty good job promoting Thai business interests here. Uh, and and the Singapore company because Singapore is a, a commercial hub, so many of the big multinational uh, they have reached office in Singapore. And a lot of the investment uh, coming in uh, through Singapore are through this MNC uh, red office or or, or or region headquarters. So Singapore is a, the third largest. I would say. Okay, hopefully we'll have more Filipino companies interested as well. Thank you very much, Andrew Tan, for joining us this morning. That was Andrew Tan, Managing Director of Consult Myanmar.